after watching another Nerd Stalker interview. <laughs> Welcome to another Nerd Stalker interview. Uh, good morning. This is Greg Valoria, AK Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nerd Stalker Media Network. Today we'll be speaking with Bob uh, Rosenstein, uh, former founder, chairman, CEO of Answers.com, and now founder of uh, Curio, an interesting content discovery platform. Uh, and uh, today, Bob will be introducing a new feature for Korea that will let him, and we'll let him talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but anyway, good evening, Bob, and welcome to Nerd Soccer Live from Israel. Thank you, Greg. It's great to be with you on the program. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, you're a serial entrepreneur. It looks like, and uh, this this new Korea platform is almost kind of like uh, I don't know. I I. I you know, I could see some of the fingerprints from uh, Answers.com on this, but, uh, you know, you might want to talk about uh, Curio and, and what led you to create Curio after you left uh, Answers.com. Happily. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've been doing software startups for many years. Uh, I've founded several companies. I've taken several of them public, best known, as you mentioned, uh, I was the founder. I founded and built Answers.com, which is a top 20 website in the U.S. Uh, we had a nice exit a couple years back. Um, but I love the whole area of content discovery and information retrieval. And I'm always looking for new innovations and how to do it. So after selling Answers.com, I said, gee, I think I'd like to start another startup and attack this problem from another new angle. And uh, been having a lot of fun. I'm, uh, I'm basically uh, working in this company uh, with my son, Akiva, and we're just having a great time building Next Generation. The team is very varied. I've worked with a bunch of them for uh, many years, and I love doing this stuff. Our whole approach, you know, a lot of people, Greg, think that uh, innovation, how much work can you innovate in these areas? But I think it's obviously just the beginning. You know, people talk about the second or third inning. Well, I think that we have so much room for information in data visualization, in information recovery and retrieval, and uh, very, very excited about it. The whole idea behind Curio started when I realized that people spend a lot of time being completely overloaded, completely buried in information. Because when you want to find out more about a person, place, or thing, you'll go typically to a search engine and they do their job very, very well. Uh, but they'll basically expose to you many pages on the web that have more information about the topic you're interested in. Okay, and what I realized that for many users, they want to invert that prism. You basically, instead of going to many places, you want to bring it to you in one simple, all-in-one view. So that's why we invented Curio, basically to defeat information overload by bringing information in a more palatable, easy to digest form to the user. And that's what we're doing. So the whole idea behind Curio is it's topic-based. Okay, it's about a thing, a person, place or thing, and it gathers information from many different sources, social networks, videos, pictures, news, reference. It brings it all together, Reddit, Twitter, and basically the whole idea is to bring it all in one easy to use place to the point of need. So what you have up here on the screen right now is a pop-up window where someone clicked on a word in an article on a publisher site and basically uh, saw information from many, many different places uh, at the point of need. What we're, uh, what we're announcing on Tuesday is a whole new approach, which is basically uh, um, a mobile app and if I can show it to you sec for a second here, tell me if you can see that at all. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Okay, so what I'm going to do is click on the Curio app. And what it does is brings me some trending topics. I, I'm going to choose, uh, I'll choose Jared Leto. <laughs> I just chose that out of the blue. Sounds good. And what you can see here, 
is we bring information, of course, pictures, we bring news, we bring, in this case, Wikipedia, videos, Hutu, Reddit, Twitter, a number of different kinds of sources. But the basic idea is give it to me in a very simple bite-sized card. So instead of going to many different places, we bring information from many places to you. Now, there's nothing to prevent you from going to Twitter yourself or to look for pictures or to go to Reddit. That's not the point. The point is we make it easy. It's all mm. about a simple data visualization. But we do something else. It's not links. What we do is bring you that information in the form of very digestible cards. So think of Curio as the all-in-one, topic-based information center. So everything you wanted to know, in this case about Jared Leto, in one very, very simple, easy-to-use place. And that's the basic idea. Now, what we do is provide different kinds of information for different subjects. If your topic is a baseball team, or your topic is a company, or your topic is a person, place, or thing, you'll get different kinds of information. But the basic idea behind Curio is the same. Please don't make me go to a lot of places. Show it to me in context in one simple, all-in-one view. And that's what Curio is about. The new feature that we're about to uh, unveil is this little plus sign here, where we let our user communities, people who care or are passionate about these subjects, add information. So it's user-generated content all on the same stream. Wow. The whole, wow. Idea, the whole idea is to let people participate in the conversation. Now, it's not Vine, like six seconds, or Instagram, 15 seconds. It's not a long-form YouTube also. It's basically short-form videos, audios, and text. So people can participate. And we call the feature... M, Y, the digit two, and the cent sign. My, My two cents. So anybody who is passionate or cares about or knows about a subject can add her or his my two cents. So the beauty of this, the beauty, now by the way, most people will not add it. The people that will add my two cents will be people who are fans or experts about something or want to have digital reputation. So you have to ask, well, how do you order it? How do you keep the junk out? And the answer is, the things that are more popular and relevant will come to the top. Things that are less popular will sink on the stream. And anything that's inappropriate, if someone sees something that's vulgar or racist or not, not right, okay, very simple flagging will get rid of it. So the idea is to make it very, very easy to have a place where people who are passionate about or care about a topic can add their two cents to the conversation. Now, again, as I said, most people will not, you know, you'll have some percentage, just like in Wikipedia, some percent participates in the form of user generated content. The rest of us, however, may well enjoy those insights because if you care about an actor, an actress, a sports figure, a company, a politician, it doesn't matter. If you're following him or her, you can benefit from seeing what other people are saying. Again, the good stuff goes to the top, bad stuff sinks down, the inappropriate stuff is off. And the whole idea is to let people enjoy viewing, reading, listening to my two cents on a variety of subjects. Wow. So those are the two uh, initial areas. I have one more surprise, but uh, just uh, if, you're, if you want to hear. Sure. After my two... After my two cents, I'm going to click back here. And, and by the way, these are just example subjects of what you could look up. Uh, you know, we have a number of trending topics, but of course you can search any topic. We've got like five million topics under management uh, in English. But let's have some fun. What, you know, most, most software startups, Greg, uh, concentrate on English because that's the most important software market, et cetera, et cetera. However, 13% of Americans speak a language other than English at home. What we decided to do, out of the box, as it were, is to localize and internationalize this product from day one. 
So what we've done is we've already adapted it to English plus another 14 international languages. So we're going to have some fun here. And you're going to choose which language we look up next. So instead of English, I'll tell you what we've got. We've got Arabic, German, English, of course, Espanol, French, Hebrew, Italian, Japanese. Japanese? Korean, wow. Dutch, Polish, Portuguese, Russian, Turkish, and Chinese. What are you going to choose? Uh, let's look at Japanese, I guess. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is select Japanese. Oh, my God. This is cool. And and now the top the trending topics have changed. And oh as you God. see, let's just choose one for fun. I don't know if you can see the news stories there. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, send it for, wow, this is incredible. They, Thank you. And it's so everything. It's the videos. It's uh, it's news. It's tweets. It's whatever is written in that language. But again, the value proposition is extremely simple. Instead of you going to a lot of different sources and finding information, going back and forth and back and forth, I'll bring it to you in all one. Curio is all about simplifying and trying to reduce information overload by bringing it to you in one easy-to-use view. You know, I had a question for you, which is, it was interesting when you said trending topics because it's a it's a curiosity to me as someone who looks for content, um, looks for content for articles to support something. Uh, how, you know, I go to the individual news sources like HuffPo, Huffington Post, right, and they'll tell me what their trending articles are. But like, I'm not really sure that's trending worldwide, right? So you've kind of solved this one issue possibly for people um, who you know, the, for us the trending topics are merely uh, example things that people might be interested in okay. we're, we're just as happy when people type in something as i mentioned we have five million uh topics under management in english uh other languages whether it's you know german or french are more like a million to a million and a half so it's a very varied area mm. the trending topics are meant to just be fun things to look up that are popular in those languages so if you were to go to Chinese, you would not get the same trending topics mm, as you it. would in, uh, in Russian or in Arabic or in Portuguese. Uh, it's Brazilian Portuguese, but we're looking for just popular things. They're mostly examples of things to look up. Oh, I see. I see. No, no, no. I, I, I totally get it now because, like, you're, you're absolutely right. If, you, if you've internationally um, localized, you localized per topic really what you're saying so like whatever's yeah. trending in israel it's not necessarily what's trending in japan no. or in the u.s so. if i were to look up uh hebrew trending topics i get a whole different uh set of information but it's mainly meant as an example case because people sometimes like to see what's new remember a lot of our a lot of our um strength is in bringing people surprising information i didn't know that and you know especially we find with a source like Reddit uh, or, uh, or Twitter, you'll get some very interesting surprises in the mix. Again, nothing, you could go on your own to those places. The only part of the content stream that is unique to Curio that you won't find anywhere else will be the My Two Cents. My Two Cents is about individual users, you know, expressing themselves and sharing their insights and views. But basically the, the idea and as this product evolves, you'll see a lot more customization. Things. But the idea is make it easy. You know, I'm at a meeting. Uh, I'm at a, a restaurant. I'm at a bus stop, and I need to know more about something. I don't want to hunt for it back and forth. I want to see it all in one simple view. And that's all the that Curio is. Curio is a simple, topic-centric content discovery platform. It happens to work on mobile, HTML, tablets, of course, smartphones, uh, desktop. It works, as you saw, as a plug-in on most uh, desktop browsers. Now we're coming out with the Android and the iOS app. It also works as a publisher extension because the back end, the concept of the aggregation of multiple interesting content sources is very similar across all of them. Not every partner will use all of the features, but the basic idea is to make it easy. 
and we just want to, you know, sometimes uh, uh, simple can be harder than complex. And we're trying to keep it simple. We believe uh, there are times when less is more. Show me one simple. We're trying to innovate visually. Uh, that's, that's what Curio is all about. It's not the richest or most powerful information retrieval engine, nor do we want it to be. We want it to be the simplest. So that's what we're aiming for. We want people to use it and enjoy it and share it. Wow, the simplest information engine. That is so refreshing, actually. You know, you know Bob, uh, you, know, you mentioned something about uh, the publisher back end. Now, how do, how do people get kind of indexed onto Curio as yeah. information sources? Well, the, what the publisher product does, basically, is we offer our partners, uh, probably the best known of them is USA Today right now. On almost all of the site, you'll find uh, automatic links. And we did it very carefully to make them polite links and not aggressive and not, you know, I've seen links that are more, <laughs> that are, that are more in your face. We did not want to be in your face. We wanted users to be able to say, who is that person? Why do I know her? And click on them and see a pop-up window, which you demonstrated before. So the way that we do those pages is we have a very, very high speed scalable technology, which looks at the page and finds the most relevant terms uh, statistically uh, on which to base the information. Because I mean, we could basically underline every word on the page. We have information about nearly everything, but that would be overkill. So we want to choose the most interesting terms to the best we can. And it operates pretty fast. It analyzes the page roughly uh, in a 20th of a second, comes back high speed, shows it doesn't slow down the page load at all, but it gives information. So for the user, that's a benefit. User says, gee, Information came to me, I didn't go to it. It came to me in one simple pop-up. Great. Rich information in context without leaving the page. Well, that's a great value proposition. But the value proposition of the publisher product for the publishers, the media site, is a different approach. Keep my readers engaged. I want more retention, engagement, and time spent on site. And basically, keep them on my page longer. Because so many readers today are in and out. They came to the page because someone recommended it on Twitter or Facebook. And they're just, they're just off. You know, Greg, we go off on so many tangents. That's the problem. We're constantly being distracted by tangents. So think of Curio as a focusing engine. Sometimes I don't want to go off on tangents. Sometimes I want all the relevant information in one easy to digest simple view. And that's what Curio is. I mean, I think that's when been one of my frustrations, as you said, I have been information overload. You know, I, I almost, yeah. I'm almost like if I'm desperate, go to Google now. I, I, I mean, I still go to Google. Don't get me wrong. But uh, you know, for the record, I love Google. It's extremely powerful and appropriate for so much. So I'm, I'm not out. I'm not against search or Google at all. What I am trying to do is have an alternative, uh, innovative, fun way to discover content. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree what you're doing. I mean, it's going the right direction, at least for me, um, where I can get focused information uh, simply, uh, as you said. And, and like the, I like the card view you had. That was, that was one thing that impressed me. I, I was like, wow, I could scroll through this card and find multiple, I mean, this window and find multiple cards on, on the topic I'm looking at. It. And you answered the question I was going to ask you about, which was like, uh, you know, how do you select the topics? Because you could have filled my whole screen <laughs> with question mark and everything. No, no, no. We want to find the most relevant or interesting ones. Uh, and by the way, we're, we're not the only ones using cards, of course. You see cards every time you open Facebook. But what we're trying to do with it is have just the right amount of information. It's more than a link and less than a tome, less than a book. It's just digestible. So if you're the kind of person who wants quick information, we try to strike the right balance, which is how much you want to do at a time. Basically, you want an overview. You want to be able to uh, quickly scroll and browse and look what's available. Yeah, that, that's just an incredible. I, I, wow. And um, the My Two Cents uh, app that you're launching um, today is going to be uh, just awesome, at least from a user content side. I mean, uh, what I see is a big benefit is, is actually focused user content, right? I mean, I could write anything about anybody. And put it on my blog, yeah. <laughs> but cool. you know they're not going to find that. I mean, uh, to be honest with you, right? My personal blog, no one's going to find it. You know, unless they really look hard. 
you know so this actually f allows you to laser focus into a topic that could be trending or could be popular so and on top of that it's also a place where people can meet around the topic because right now you could follow your favorite artists you can follow them on twitter you can follow them on facebook follow them on instagram but that's a lot of different places to go or again we're trying to make it about the topic not about not about the person necessarily because the person might have 18 different things that people could look up about him or her but we want to make it again very very simple visually innovative uh user experience yeah i mean i, I don't like uh, making too many direct con uh you know, uh, contrast, but it's kind of like a, a mashup of Wikipedia, Reddit, and a social network and a news network. I mean, I, I that's initially that's my. I might use it. That's a good way to describe it. Can you uh, tell us how uh, our viewers could get a hold of Creo and this new uh, My Two Cents app that you're releasing? Absolutely. Well, as of uh, Tuesday, it should be available on the App Store and on the Play Store. Just look up Curio. I'll spell it. C U R I Y O, Curio with a Y. And uh, also, of course, Curio.com. Uh, we have a download page. And uh, basically, it's available in all kinds of different forms. And just enjoy it right back to it. If you like it, uh, tell your friends. If you don't like it, tell us. <laughs> I love it. No, thank you again. Um, and, uh, yeah, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. And if you're out here in uh, San Francisco again, we'll, we'll do a live interview. I think that would be really kind of cool. So that would be great. So, thank okay. you very much. I very much enjoyed meeting you by, uh, by Hangouts, and uh, we'll look forward to being in touch. All right. Thank you. Well, anyway, that was, um, you know, Bob Rosenstein, um, the uh, – founder and CEO of Curio, announcing a new service today called My Two Cents. And uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. This is Greg Gloria, AK Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nerd Stalker Media Network, where we believe in tech, startups, design, and you. And uh, so uh, thanks for joining us, everyone, and be careful out there. Thanks again, Bob, uh, and have a great evening. Talk, talk to you later.